The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Thursday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern time. We've got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading, and you got markets picking things off right where we left off yesterday. Lower prices dramatically to the downside. We just hit a price of 44.03 in the S&Ps. You get the S&Ps off about 8 tenths percent in the red, off 36 points at 44.10. NASDAQ 100 leading the way off 1.25 percent. You're under 15,000, 14,000. 962 and you're talking about almost 800 points in the nasdaq we just gave up you're talking about in the s p's you put it on a five minute chart you back it up to the highs of last friday morning 3.5 percent shaved off, the, off of this market in less than one week so be careful out here folks things are moving quickly we'll get over to yields in a moment dow right now off about five tenths percent trading at 34,565 in the russell off about seven tenths percent 1813 is the price <clears throat> Excuse me. Crude oil catches a bid off the lows of 88.37. We're back above $90 for light sweet crude, trading up 68 pennies on the session at 90.34. Gold contract facing some heat. What do we got? We got higher yields. You got a stronger dollar. That's going to put a hurt on the gold contract. Yesterday, we're at 19.68. This morning, we're down $31 additional on top of that at 19.35. Now, remember that what happens in gold is that that session is ending in the middle of the afternoon. So unlike the markets, you add $31, which is technically off on the session, that brings you up to 1966. So you can see that this is kind of off $31 on the session. But meanwhile, a lot of that yesterday, well, say how about half of it yesterday, half of it today. Nonetheless, that will make sense when we get over to yields and the dollar and let's get over. Uh, there is your tenure. Let's see where we're at right now as we talk about it. The tenure. 4.47%, right up against that 4.5% number. The 10-year, off an additional 26 ticks. You back it up to yesterday at 1 o'clock in the afternoon, a full point, folks. Even from where we're at right now, you trade from 109.17 down to 108.08 this morning. You're up five basis points off of that low at 108.13. You jump over to the two-year, and the two-year right now, about 5.17%, almost pushing towards 5.2% yield on the two-year. Pretty remarkable across the board, and that, of course, translating into dollar strength. Whoops, DXY. You jump over to the dollar index, and you're pushing 105.73 this morning. You back off a bit as you get a little bit of a reprieve on the yields, but, boy, you're talking about a full point from 104.70 yesterday to 105.70 this morning. Just mammoth moves across the board. All right, where do we start off? Let's talk about a little bit of Fed, man. Why not? The Fed signals higher for longer rates with hikes almost finished. Powell stresses a careful approach in the Wednesday press conference. And that's the key, the second bullet point here. Officials now see less easing next year than they anticipated. Everything can always change, folks, right? Data dependent. The Fed is data dependent. No matter what you talk about here, they're going to, quote, unquote, proceed carefully, okay? A sentiment he has repeated at least a dozen at least excuse me, I'll start again, a sentiment he repeated at least a dozen times during the press conference that followed the announcement. 12 of the 19 Fed officials said they expect to raise rates one more time this year. So seven of the Fed officials think that they're done and potentially they'll pause with their dot plots. Excuse me. They show that they expect inflation to fall below 3% next year, and they're looking for a return to 2% by 2026. Now, that gets some headlines, okay? They're looking for 2.2% by 2025. And I talked about yesterday, I was live from 2 till 2.30 when we got the announcement. We got the decision at 2 o'clock. We all had to wait for the press conference at 2.30. And one of the things I was saying is it sounds like a pro forma spreadsheet, right? Who knows what's going to happen in 2026, man? I mean, that's their job, okay, to forecast and to use the FOMC and interest rate policy to try and guide the market the best they can. 
but who knows where we're going to be in 2026, man. Putting that number out there, especially when you say, ah, we'll be at 2.2% .2 by 2025, and we're going to get those last two to tenths percentage points by 2026. It's a Goldilocks scenario, in my opinion, okay? Not sure that's how things are going to play out. And even if that's how things play out, it's still going to be higher for longer than what the market was thinking. The new projections reflected the Fed officials now expect their benchmark rate to be at 5.1% by the end of next year. The market was looking for 4.6. That was the, excuse me, that was the biggest change out there. 5.1 by the end of next year, you're looking for, as opposed to 4.6 was what the market was expecting there. Markets trade lower, dollar trades higher, yields are trading higher, and everything is extending those gains this morning as we press forward. It's gonna be an interesting day to see how this market digests some of that action when you think about, we just gave up about 100 S&P points, folks. Let's see where that high was yesterday. To get the tick, early on the open, 45.08. Yeah, 105 S&P points over the period of about 24 hours. Whoo, watch out, folks. Uh, okay, taking a little bit bigger picture in the S&Ps. I was looking at this morning. So, we're coming into the lows of August. Okay, zooming in on those lows, we got a spike low on the 18th to 43.50, nice round number, I'm man Basil Chapman, but you did chop around from August 17th to August 25th, so eight days, you had about six, seven trading days in there, where you were sitting just at about 4,400, maybe 4,375, ballpark that figure, we're coming right back into that number, okay? So that's gonna be an area that potentially we face a little bit of support, we'll see if we blow through that area, I think we will blow through that area, okay? You blow through that area, where's the next stop? Next stop's 4,200, man, okay? And that's gonna be an area that you're definitely gonna have an area of support. Doesn't mean it's gonna hold, but that is gonna be an area of support. That is an area that you held in the market from February was the first high. You almost got back up there in December. You reached a high of 4,180. You made it up, chopped around in February, and then we consolidated from basically April 4th, where you had a high of 4,171, until you broke out of that area on June 1st, so almost two full months, you were chopping around at 4,200. So you get back to that area, that's an area. Expect that you could see some support. Now here's the kicker, all right? Taking even a bigger long-term picture, even a longer-term picture, you should say. Uh, putting it on the SPY, I think that's where I have the chart up there. There it is. Now what's interesting here is, this is the SPY. The areas correlate, okay? You see that the area we're coming into right now in the SPY, the low of about 433, we're at 445 right now, potentially. That you that was the low of August. This is a weekly chart we're looking at. The 1 to 1 1.618 expansion of the COVID lows, and this is getting really big picture, okay? And let's just put it on the ES for some context here. I'm going to zoom in on the COVID acceleration. I'm going to put a Fibonacci retracement on that number, okay? And the 1 to 1.6.8 brings you kind of right back up to that area, right? So you're talking about 4160, 4200 is the round number. We had a high of 4208 back in January, okay? Keep that number on your radar, folks, okay? That's the expansion of a 1 to 1.6.8 of the COVID lows to higher price. And that also correlates basically to an area of resistance from late last year to early this year. And so that's an area that I'm looking for this market to trade back to right now, 44.10. I mean, what gets in the way of this market to get it higher at ahead of that next Fed meeting? Next Fed meeting, November 1st. We've got six weeks, and I see a lot of headwind in this market for the first time in a while over the next six weeks. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be coming back talking to our man Kevin Hanks from the Schwab Network. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at tfnn.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps off about 36 points right now, trading at 44.11. We got the NASDAQ 100 off 186. That's off about 1.25%. To talk about some of the market action this morning, let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hinks. Every trading day, folks, right here on Tiger TV, you can check out Fast Market from the Schwab Network at 12 noon Eastern time. Kevin Hinks, Tom White, and the team, outstanding program. And let's dive right into the action. Kevin Hinks, we got some action in this market. Good morning. Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. Yeah, interesting reaction to everything that Jerome Powell said. Even though it was a pause, a lot of things, a lot of moving parts, uh, Tom, yesterday. And to sum it up for your viewers, you know, the Econo you know, the uh, summary of economic pro projections, the SEP, that was the key part. We knew that was going to happen. And to, to, to sum it up for you, the forecast for unemployment went down. The forecast for GDP went up. The forecast for the Fed funds rate w went up. And the bottom line is this market is a bit stronger than we thought it was going to be, and you see that right in the 10-year yield spiking this morning. And the Bank of England left their rates unchanged. Uh, that spiked the U.S. dollar. And so at least to start the day, we've got some stocks under pressure. And not surprising, it's the NASDAQ, those seven names that have led us higher all along, Tommy. Yeah, pretty remarkable. I got the yield curve up here in front of me, Kevin. The 10-year right now, I got it at 4.48%. The two-year, um, pushing almost 5.2%, just some mammoth moves. And as you mentioned, of course, growth stocks uh, pulling back one and a quarter percent this morning. S&P's off about 36 points. You got the S&P's off about 100 points from where it was yesterday morning. What did you think, Kevin, about, and I and I love the saying, and if you can go over this with the listeners, because I, I, I was looking at those projections from the Fed, and they go out all the way to 2026, and they're talking about in 2026, we're back at 2% for CP, uh, PCE, 
They talk about maybe we're at 2.2, not maybe, that's what they put out, 2.2% potentially in 2025. But for the listeners that haven't heard you talk about it, because, boy, that is so far out to think about where this economy will be. Um, what do you think about those projections going out that far? And if you can remind the listeners that you talk about staying current, because I love the way you talk about that. And that's what I was thinking about yesterday when I saw some of those projections going out two to three years in this economy that, man, people have missed the mark many times. Um, what do you think about some of those numbers pretty far out? Yeah. When Jerome Powell himself discounts the dot plot. Why? Because anything more than three months, no one has any idea. So the dot plots, anything past the end of this year has zero uh, decision making weight to them. Because they're going to, the, the Fed is going to watch the economic data, they're going to watch how it moves and what the overall economy does, and they're going to react to that. So these dot plots are a great conversation tool and they give a snapshot right now of what the 19 members of the fed think about the economy going forward but it absolutely is worth zero past about three months tommy i appreciate a little bit of uh sanity to the conversation because i try and wrap my head around a man three years out my goodness right two years out my goodness i was joking yesterday kevin it reminded me of like you know you have a business creating a pro forma spreadsheet and they tell you in three years they're going to be overtaking amazon you say all right we'll see what happens man uh good, yeah. with, good luck with, with that and yeah, exactly, very similar yeah. to this they've got work to do on inflation right we all know that the economy is stronger than expected the data is coming in stronger than expected so i think what jerome powell's fear is that uh much like paul volcker it's the old stop and start on inflation right and that's what he's afraid of that's why remember the fed funds rate projection for the end of this year is 5.6 percent that means another hike is on the table there or expected before the end of the year so I, I think Jerome Powell is commandeering a smooth landing, but it's bumpy. Sometimes a smooth landing can can, can be a little bumpy, but if it, you know if he if he gets this to work, it'll be it'll be pretty significant. With trying to stay as current as we can, the next meeting coming up November first, I believe, is the decision. So we're about six week out. Six weeks out is how they go. Uh, you said it well, 12 of the 19 Fed members potentially looking for one more hike this year. It doesn't necessarily have to be at that November meeting. But how are you wrapping your brain around where we go over the next six weeks? Is, is I mean, yesterday and today, as I just mentioned, 100 points in the S&P. Uh, are you just waiting for some of that data that we're going to get, whether it's for the month of September? All right, how are you looking at that next Fed meeting six weeks out already? Yeah, there, there's a lot of data we're going to get between now and then. We're going to get PCE next week, right? That, that's going to be a, a big, important part because Jerome Powell likes to look at that core PCE year-over-year -year number. So, listen, I think from a perspective, it should surprise no one, Tommy, no one, that some of the frothy P.E. ratios in the NASDAQ will be the ones that get hit the quickest and the hardest. And why? Because those seven stocks that we named the Magnificent Seven, they led us here. So if rates spike higher like they do, and, you know, I've told, I've said on your air uh, before, the market can handle rates higher, dollar higher, crude oil higher, but spiking is the problem. And crude oil's back over 90. You know, the 10 year yield, that's a spike, one and a quarter percent, or, or one and a quarter, 123 basis points right now, almost 3% in the 10 year. That's a spike. That's going to make the market uncomfortable, Tommy. So that's what we're dealing with. You know, the economic data, the good news is for the uh, U.S., uh, you know, the United States is our economy is still strong. That doesn't always correlate to a strong stock market. No, well said, man, because the economy is strong and the multiples probably a little out of whack. Maybe they, they whack back into reality a bit. I was jumping through some of those charts as you were talking about it. Apple alone off almost six dollars from where it was yesterday. Microsoft shares off what? Almost ten dollars from where you were yesterday. Google shares off almost eight dollars seven dollars so pretty pretty decisive moves to put it lightly with that in mind kevin as you mentioned coming into the end of the season we had fedex with their numbers last night do you guys have any equities that you'll be talking about on fast market at 12 today man 
Yeah, L- L- like Folio is going to do a presentation on Coinbase. So we're going to look at them and, and the effects on cryptocurrency during this, you know, this period. Um, we're going to look at Uber. And with everything going on, you know, Uber is a pretty big competitor of Instacart. So we're going to look at Uber. And then we're going to trade CrowdStrike in the final nice. segment. So Uber, Coinbase, and CrowdStrike today. Three great stocks, man. I appreciate the insight, as always, Kevin, on a pretty important market day. Uh I, I, I look forward to the program at 12 o'clock. We don't talk to you tomorrow, of course, so we'll talk to you on Tuesday. And who knows where this market will be by Tuesday morning, mm-hmm. man. I appreciate it. Have a great day, Tommy, and a great you weekend. You too, Kevin. You too. Folks, check it out. Every trading day, fast market from the Schwab Network right here on Tiger TV, 12 noon Eastern time. You heard about it. They're talking about three great stocks. Look at the action in CrowdStrike this morning, man. From 163 up to 172, back to 165. Coinbase, right? Check out Coinbase yesterday at 80 bucks. We're at 74 this morning uh, as well. And Uber. Yeah, that's an interesting one. You take a little bit of a look at longer term. This thing has been on quite an acceleration this year. You start off the year at 25 bucks. You almost double that price tag up to 49.49. You backed off a bit. Yeah, how about Instacart, man, as we wrap it up? Instacart, just like that. Negative prices yesterday down to about 30 bucks. We were at 43. Stay tuned, folks. We're coming back for the opening bell. Don't go away. Adding stock options to your portfolio can be a major game changer. But the full complexities of these instruments can oftentimes elude even the most experienced traders. Whether you're a seasoned trader looking to sharpen your knowledge on options or you're completely new to the market, Teddy Kekstat is here to help. On Wednesday, September 27th, from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time, Teddy is hosting a live stream that will teach you how to capitalize on time with calendar stock option spreads. Teddy will also go over how to trade stocks and other market movements without large capital allocation, how to expand portfolio diversification, how to maximize potential returns, basic entry and exit techniques, and more. If that wasn't enough of a reason to attend, Teddy will also be answering all questions live. If you're serious about making money in this market, head over to the front page of TFNN.com today to sign up for Teddy's live stream. TFNN, educating investors. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30 year T bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV.
Welcome back, folks. We get the S&P down about 30 points on the open. You're 13 points off the low we had at about 8.30 this morning. So you catch a little bit of a lift. Still, NASDAQ 100 off 1.1%. You got the Dow right now off about 3 tenths percent. And the Russell off 1.1%. Basically, session lows on the open right there. Crew contract catches a bit. Back to 90.54 for the price of crude. Gold taking a hurting. Taking, yeah, hurt. Uh, taking a hurting. Yeah, maybe. Uh, with the dollar index pushing higher, man, 105.50. We were up all the way to 105.73 in that dollar index. And let's check in on some of the fa those FANG stocks. Amazon shares, 3%, man. <whistles> Watch out in this market, folks. Amazon off 3% right now to 131.54. You jump over to Apple off a quarter percent. They catch a lift, maybe a little bit of a safe haven. Now, I've talked about it before. Apple's got 16 billion shares outstanding. Ballparking, rounding. You're off $5. That's $80 billion in market cap wiped out just from where we were on the <clears throat> open yesterday. You jump over to Microsoft shares. They're off about three tenths percent right now to kick things off at about 320. You were trading at 330 yesterday. Excuse me, NVIDIA shares. They catch a lift as well. Look at this. You were just at 411 on NVIDIA. You popped to 419. You were at almost 440 at the open yesterday for NVIDIA. Tesla shares. They catch a lift as well. So there's going to be some winners and losers here. Still off a percent, but you're only off $2.72 for Tesla. You were as low as two fifty five on the open there for Tesla shares. Netflix, they've been one of the runners in this market. Actually positive by a percentage for Netflix shares. Let's jump to the streamers. Warner Brothers Discovery, basically flat this morning. You jump over to Disney, down 7 tenths percent, chopping around at about $82. And let's check back in on yields to keep our eye. Yeah, slight reprieve, but boy, we're only a few ticks away from the lows of 10808 this morning on the 10-year. You jump to the two-year right now and just off the lows as well, sitting at 10107. I mean, where does this market find optimism and a bid until the next Fed meeting? That's what I find myself asking this morning. You should ask yourself that question, right? Uh, we've seen the growth get pushed forward. We've seen rates go higher. We've seen the artificial intelligence craze catch hold, okay? But where do you find the bid for the next acceleration, okay? There is the NVIDIA acceleration that started in on May, right? From 300 to 400, you get, it, you get up to 500, we're almost back to 400. You're gonna fill that gap? We might fill that gap, folks. Be careful, we already filled about half of that gap. Okay, you're up to 502. We're back to about 420 for NVIDIA shares. You're off by about nine tenths percent right now. Now, remember, <clears throat> this run really started almost in March on the S&Ps. Okay, we're backing things up a bit. And we're talking about this in the den, and we're having some great conversations in the den, folks. If you're out there listening, you haven't joined the Tigers den yet, head on over to TFNN. It's a dollar to join it for the year. We only charge that, so we keep out the spammers. We validate everybody. You're not getting a bunch of garbage in there. And there's some great conversations about potentials for this market. Uh, I talked about the beginning of the program, maybe 4,200, okay? Now, what's very cool is... One of our tigers in there is talking about, you know, you take the area of the low of about 3,500, you take a Fibonacci expansion, you throw it up there, okay? The 382 is right at about 4,200. Pretty cool, right? You take the lows of 3,500, you accelerate to the highs of 4,634, you back things off, you got the 382 at about 4,203. Then what you do, okay, is that I add in there, you take the one-way trip this market's been in from about March 13th, you take that Fibonacci retracement and the 618 of that Fibonacci retracement is about 4150. Both of those, okay, an area of confluence is a Fibonacci retracement zone of two different trends that coincide. So you got the 382 of the larger trend sitting at about 4200. You got the 618 of the shorter term trend sitting at about 4150. That gives you an area of confluence between about 4150 and 4200. And that area correlates to basically the area we were talking about, which was the 4,200 area that this thing has had resistance at, okay? But maybe that's gonna turn into support potentially, maybe that's a price target. But you see in this area, and let's see if I can, let's see if I can highlight this area for us, right? We're gonna highlight that area of confluence, and there it is, okay? And look how well that lines up. I'm gonna activate that drawing. 
with where this market chopped around, which I found so cool. Doesn't mean it's gonna happen, folks, okay? But keep that on your radar, because that's the 382 of the longer term trend and the 618 of the shorter term trend, and it lines up so well with where this market struggled to get above, maybe that's the first projection of where you get below, uh, an area of confluence at about 4,200 to 4,150. And it might be a quick move, folks. Now, this area that we're coming into of about 4,375, okay? The you could say it's almost the 382 of the shorter term trend, but basically the area that was the low in August there, that's gonna be your first step to see how this market trades. But we gave up 100 points in the last 24 hours, folks. So we're only talking about 200 points from where we're at right now. And we gave up 100 points in the last 24 hours. And growth stocks in particular, okay, keep your eye on these yields, man, because it's a new world, right? It is a brave new world that we are in Think about buying the 10 year at 140, okay? You wanna do a better one? Think about being a bank and buying 30 years at 170 or 162. That's a quick way to push your bank out of business because you're only getting 116 for the next couple of years, right? You gotta hold them to maturity for 30 years if you want that money back. But if you don't hold them for 30 years and you wanna sell them two years later, you bought them at 162 and you're selling them at 116. What is that? 162 minus 116. That's a $46 loss. That is a 28.4% capital loss on a 30 year fixed investment in a US Treasury over a period of two years. 28.4%. That's a quick way to go out of business as a bank, and we saw it happen. Mammoth moves across the board. You're making new, lose on, new lows on the 30 year. We're off by almost two full points right now on the 30 year. And that is pushing things. Um, let me see if I can find it and find it quickly, here we go. That is pushing the 30 year to now 4.53%, the 10 year, 4.47, and the two year, 5.15, almost at that 5.2 was where that two year was falling. All right, let's jump over to the gold contract. I mean, you got dollar strength like this, man. Gold's gonna struggle, That's that's, baked into this market. Uh, if you're looking for gold, maybe you're looking for the 1910 area, right? I mean, that's where we were back in June. That's where we were back in August. We're sitting at about $24 above that price tag, which is about 1900 area, maybe 1910 on the price of gold. Uh, this is a brave new world, as I said before, man. So be careful in this market. You get the dollar index at 105.48 right now. You get the highs of March, 105.88. What's so interesting, right? is that this market has plowed higher since March. And meanwhile, we got the dollar index right back to where we were, right? March 8th, dollar index, 105 and change. Today, 105 and change. We check out yields over that time, okay? You back it up to March, there's your spike low that correlates a bit, okay, to 110.12, we're two full points below that. So you have higher yields, you got the dollar at the same area. And meanwhile, we have the S&Ps, folks, sitting still almost 550 points above where we were. So be careful. Stay tuned, folks. We're coming back in three minutes. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. 
Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Adding stock options to your portfolio can be a major game changer. But the full complexities of these instruments can oftentimes elude even the most experienced traders. Whether you're a seasoned trader looking to sharpen your knowledge on options or you're completely new to the market, Teddy Kekstat is here to help. On Wednesday, September 27th, from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time, Teddy is hosting a live stream that will teach you how to capitalize on time with calendar stock option spreads. Teddy will also go over how to trade stocks and other market movements without large capital allocation, how to expand portfolio diversification, how to maximize potential returns, basic entry and exit techniques, and more. If that wasn't enough of a reason to attend, Teddy will also be answering all questions live. If you're serious about making money in this market, head over to the front page of TFNN.com today to sign up for Teddy's live stream. TFNN, educating investors. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&P down about 39 points right now. And you're looking at the NASDAQ off 155 right now. That's about a percent. NASDAQ lifts a bit. We were off one and a quarter percent on that number. And you jump over to crude, continuing higher crude contract. Back to a short-term time frame. You get the crude contract. Excuse me as I'm jumping around here. Just one second. Up about a dollar to 90.69. You see pushing the highs just of yesterday in terms of where we are. You get the S&Ps off an even 40 points right now. One second, folks, as I jump around here. I apologize. Gold contract down about 30. And, yeah, watch out for this market, man. You know, this might seem like quite a pullback, 100 points. Give me one second here. Because from where we are and where we've been, folks, uh, context is everything. Okay? And you're seeing... One more second. Appreciate you hanging with me. You're seeing a market that has the potential to go dramatically lower. Okay, because for some reason we have the context that this market is at 4,500. But remember, we were just at 3,500. I was having the conversation yesterday talking about, you know, if you're not willing to accept a 20% haircut in this market, then don't be in this market because there is a very real threat that that's where we go. And you're looking at right now, Okay, thank you. I'm all set. Two more. Yeah, we got to get some trades going, man, because this market's rocking. Okay. All right, we're good. Uh, okay, let's take a look at this because this was a one-way trip, folks. I'm going to take these Fibonacci's number numbers off here. We're going to leave that confluence area, which remember is the 382 from the lows of the market, which was 3500, and that is correlating to the 618 of the shorter term trend from March 13th. Okay, but when you're talking about a 20% haircut, we just lost three and a half percent in less than a week. Okay, and all that would be is bringing this market back to about a year ago, and I'm gonna do a little bit big picture, okay? Would it be the end of the world if you saw the S&P touch this point one more time? 
No, that wouldn't be the end of the world at all. Look at that. All that would be is just a larger consolidation, a larger pullback. We have rates correlating to much higher price yields on a longer term basis. And we have a market that hasn't traded lower essentially over a period of six plus months. Okay, so be careful in this market. The numbers seem large right now, but remember where we're sitting. We're right in here all time highs. And now we have yields and the cost of capital. Okay, so everybody talks about the cost of consumer capital, which they should, right? What's your signature worth? What's it take to buy a house? How much can you afford when you buy a car? All of that matters dramatically. But where it matters as well is the cost of capital for businesses. And that's why you're seeing growth stocks getting hit. And I don't think that one has fully reverberated in this market yet, especially with the multiples we're dealing with with some of the growth stocks, because you're going to push higher levels for the cost of capital on a forward going basis, even staying short term. OK, the Fed's not budging for some time. OK, that was a dramatic shift to 5.1 percent at the end of next year. Folks, 5.1 percent at the end of next year. You're going out 15 months and the Fed's telling you that we're still going to be at 5.1 percent. That is going to weigh on equities across the board. And it's going to take a little time to reverberate through the multiples that these equities are priced at. You saw it happen yesterday. And boy, I was eager to take a look at the futures this morning. And I was not surprised when I saw things. Yeah, about seven o'clock. I started looking at the market. I was up with Tommy at almost 6, 630. And by 7 o'clock, this market was already at a price tag of basically where it's at right now. Almost, what was the low there? 44.11. Yeah, and we're sitting at 44.07. I said, yeah, yesterday was not a one-off. Today's probably not a one-off either. It doesn't mean we won't get some accelerations higher over that period of time. But be careful because I'm looking for, over the next six weeks, pressure on this market leading up to the next meeting. Maybe we see how the data goes. But the Fed has spoken, the market is listening, and they're not going to speak again until November 1st. And don't expect a reprieve even at that November 1st meeting. I think you're going to see the market be forward-looking leading up to November 1st. Very difficult to imagine that this market catches another bid when you think about the multiples already priced in across the board, especially with growth stocks that have carried this market dramatically. Kevin said it well. Let's check back in on some of those FANG stocks. You got Apple shares down about three tenths percent. Microsoft shares this morning down about seven tenths percent. Amazon taking a hurt and off 2.5 percent so far this morning. Nvidia, the AI poster boy, off 1.6 percent. We talked about Nvidia saw 500 bucks. This started at 300 bucks. You gave up almost 100 dollars from those highs. Doesn't you know? Keep in mind that you can give up an extra hundred too. And not spreading fear, folks, but context is important. It's, rem it's important to remember how fast and far this market has risen, even in the face of rates. And it seems like the narrative has been, OK, we're almost done. OK, we're almost there. there. We're going to be looking for cuts soon. And every time we go forward to the next Fed meeting, it just keeps getting pushed back further in terms of when those cuts are coming. All right, Bank of England. So they keep rates unchanged for the first time in almost two years. It was a close one. Split 5-4. Andrew Bailey casting the decisive vote. And let's jump over to the pound. See how we're trading on that. Get the pound US dollar at 122.70. You were at almost 125 yesterday. We'll jump over to the euro US dollar right now with some currency action. 106.51. We're at 107. Dollar strength, man. I'll tell you, I was appreciating a higher dollar when I was in Europe. That's for sure. I was able to uh, save a little bit of cash as we got the dollar with strength versus the euro in particular. And what else we got pulled up here? Let's see. Yeah, the, the march is on. We'll check in on some of the automakers and see how they're trading. And if you're in the market for a car and you're in the market like right now, go get a car, man, because I don't know how this is going to play out. If you're not willing to wait a year or two to buy a vehicle again, I wouldn't be waiting for these car makers to make sure they're okay because the battle is on and you're seeing this play out across the board and this is a generational opportunity for some of these workers in unions to really try and press their leverage against some of these companies that have made a lot of money recently. So doesn't mean it's not going to happen, but protect yourself. You know, if you're really in the market for a car and you're not willing to wait if things go bad here, go get yourself a car because I wouldn't be waiting. Because there's nothing to say this might not play out for an extended period of time. I mean, these headlines write themselves, right? The auto workers 
uh, say the new offer doesn't look good. <laughs> Is AI right in these? The Jeep and Ram car maker that Stellantis submitted the fifth offer to the union. GM also struggling to find a deal as the strike set to expand. I think that's coming this weekend, right? Lacks job security guarantees the union wants. And this is where things go much deeper than the pay, okay? So my mom was a worker for Verizon. So some of this playing out when she was on strike the years past, she's retired since then. We're gonna come into the break, but we'll finish it up. But there's a lot that goes into the details in terms of what is their ability to hire workers, fire workers, close plants, make people travel extended periods of time, almost forcing, forcing them to quit, etc. The devil is in the details, as always. Stay tuned, folks. Markets off 41. We'll be right back to finish the show. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. And just like that, we're at session lows. Basically, we just hit 4403 in the S&Ps. You're off by a full percent in the S&Ps. We're rounding. NASDAQ 100, you're pushing 1.4% right now. Dow, off about half a percent. How about the Russell? Off 1.4%. Crude, continuing higher. Almost just hit $91. Where we get up to? 90.98. We're pushing highs. Crude up a buck 11 on the session. Gold contract off almost $32. We keep our eye on the dollar index right now, 105.56. We check in on yields one last time for the program. With the 10-year pulling back within a few ticks of 
the lows at 108.08. We're at 108.11 on the 10-year. You jump to the two-year right now, 101.08 on the two-year. And uh, yeah, be careful in this market as you say it. One last data point, jobless claims this morning, 201,000, the lowest level since January. I mean, how's the Fed gonna tame inflation? Maybe crude prices help, right? Maybe you got crude prices in there helping, but the double-edged sword is, is bad news gonna be good news, which is gonna turn into bad news, which is good news, which is bad news. I mean, I joke with, you know, how many levels deep do you go? You can level yourself into obscurity in terms of where is the level that matters, okay? But the bottom line is, we need to get inflation under control. This market has been euphoric to the upside. We're now gonna have an area where growth is persisting. We have higher crude prices, which are gonna weigh on the pocketbooks of everybody. You have student loan payments beginning at the same time. And we have markets with multiples that have defied reality. And so how do those play out for the final quarter of the year? No, folks, if I had money in this market and I had locked it in all the way up to 4,400 or 4,500, I'm not looking for 4,600 or 4,800. And here's the kicker. Okay, the kicker is when you're getting 5.5% on your money risk-free, you can go out two years and you're pushing 4,800. Okay, you're pushing those levels as, you know, I've said enough. I appreciate you joining me, folks. This is quite a market. Stay tuned. We got our man Basil Chapman coming up next. And as I speak, you got markets at session lows with the S&Ps pushing 4,400. NASDAQ 100 off 216 points. Appreciate you joining me this morning. I'll see you tomorrow morning as well. Stay tuned, folks. Live programming all day. Basil's up next. Have a great one, folks.